Hey guys, what's going on? It is your good buddy Sam, and I hope you are excited because you should be. This is another exciting Max MSP tutorial. Um, today I'm going to show you how to do some cool video stuff with some texture mapping um, and some geometry manipulation. It's going to be a good time. Stick around. Uh, and also tomorrow, the Wednesday the 8th of February, no, Jesus, Wednesday the 6th of February. Uh, if you're around, you should come to Noisebridge where I'm going to be doing a little class on Max MSP. Um, like a beginning class, just here's what an object is, here's how you add numbers, um, noise tilde makes sound, and that kind of stuff. Uh, so maybe if you're watching this tutorial, it might be a little bit too beginner for you, but um, I don't know, you got a friend who wants to get into it, you should send them along. It's going to be, it's going to be a good time. Good times will be had by all. So anyway, let's get started. Um, this is going to blow your mind. First thing you have to do is open Max. I know. At this point, you wouldn't think. And I'm going to be using Max 6 in this tutorial, but I'm going to do the best I can to make this Max uh, 5 compatible. Um, I noticed a lot of people are still using 5, but you should upgrade to 6, man. 6 is way better. We got Gen. We got um, Physics. Got all kinds of good stuff. Come to 6. Also, pays my salary, so you should definitely come on over to 6. Um, anyway, so here's what I want to do. Uh, let's do some video stuff, and so to do that, first thing we're going to need is, of course, a window in which to draw. So, um, jit.window, and I'm going to call my window cell pump, cell pump, um, and you'll see why in a second. Here's my cell pump window, and I'm going to save this. You can, of course, name and save it anything you want. You know, you're a free and beautiful creative snowflake, so you should just feel free to name it whatever you want and save it in whatever folder you want. But I'm going to save mine in a place called Max Documents in a new folder called 25 Cell Pump. And I'm going to call it, <laughs> get ready for something amazing, Cell Pump. Cool. So, um, got that window, and where is the window? So over here, uh, I like when I'm doing this junk to make my window floating so I can always see it and then freeze that attribute so it will save with the patch. I like to turn full screen anti-aliasing um, on because uh, it looks better and I turn the full screen menu bar off because it looks terrible um, when it's on. So anyway, there's that window and then the usual thing that I like to do here is add in a key to detect key presses, cell uh, 27 to get the escape key being pressed in particular. Um, add a toggle under here, um, and then a message box full screen dollar sign one. And now because bangs are coming out of that cell 27 every time I push the escape key, I can use this to toggle full screen. So escape, full screen, unescape, not full screen. This awesome weird bar appears at the bottom. No idea what's up with that. Go ahead and delete that. It's probably fine. And control shift E to encapsulate all that. I'm going to call this subpatcher full screen. And now we can full screen. Awesome. Okay, that's sort of step zero. Um, now we need a uh, OpenGL context rendering chain thing going on. So I'm going to add a QMetro uh, 50. So we'll be rendering 20 frames a second. Um, connect that down here, and then trigger bang, bang, erase. So bangs come out of this Q metro. First, we'll send an erase message to the JIT dot, uh, GL dot, uh, dot render, and we give it the argument cell pump, so it knows that this window is its rendering context. First, send the erase message. Then, I'm going to create a send here and name it pre-render. Um, so that before we actually render, we'll send out a bang to any objects that need to do something before the rendering happens. And finally, send a bang to JITGL render so it actually renders. Turn this box on. This little thing turns gray because that's the erase color of our GL context. Now immediately come into your G, this is critical, I'm about to show you a critical step. Come into your JITGL render inspector, go down here to um, erase color, where are you, erase color, and make this an intense fuchsia. If you don't do this, nothing will work. You have to change this erase color to intense fuchsia. 
you don't actually have to change the erase color to intense fuchsia. Okay, uh, so next thing that we need to do is actually uh, draw some geometry in here. So what we're going to do, I want to make a plane, and then I'm going to um, map my beautiful face onto that plane, and then warp and contort that plane so that everything looks goofy. Um, so first thing we need is a plane, and a plane is just going to be a set of points. Each one of those points is going to have three uh, numbers associated with it. The x-coordinate of that point, the y-coordinate of that point, and the z-coordinate of that point. Uh, in the context of our plane, since the plane is flat, the z-coordinate is going to be the same, it's just going to be zero. Uh, but x and y is going to be a grid, um, where zero, zero is in the bottom left and one, one is in the top right. And there's a very easy way to do that, to get a, a jitter matrix full of data that looks like that. And that's using jit.exper. So I'm going to make a matrix, uh, jit.matrix. And I'm going to name it pump matrix. It sounds a little bit gross, but that's OK. This is a three plane matrix of floats, which are just floating point or decimal numbers. I'm going to make it a 100 by 100 matrix. And I'm going to send one of these out, uh, pre-render, pre-render. Here's where that pre-render is coming in useful. Um, before we render every frame, I'm going to bang on this matrix and send out a big 100 by 100 matrix of um, zeros. Next, I'm going to use jit.exper. Jit.exper um, does a cell by cell uh, manipulation on the matrix data a lot like jit.gen. Um, so what I want to do is make it so that the x coordinate is going to be um, in the range of uh, 0 to 1 across the entire um, dimensions of this plane. So the point at the bottom right is going to be uh, 0, 0. Point at the top, no, bottom left will be 0, 0. Top right will be 1, 1. And in between, I want the values to go smoothly from 0 to 1. Fortunately, there's an extremely way to do this that requires literally no uh, comprehension or understanding on the part of me, the user, uh, which is good because I rarely have any of that. And that's uh, throwing this at expert, and then we will do norm. Um, bracket zero, comma, norm, bracket one, comma, zero. So what is this doing? This is saying, fill the first plane of our matrix with the normalized coordinate in X, the second plane of our matrix with the normalized coordinate in Y, and the third plane of our matrix with zeros. And that's it, man. And I'm going to throw in the uh, at adapt one flag here, which just means that this matrix, the output of this uh, matrix will be the same as the... Um, the matrix dimensions of the output of this will be the same as the matrix dimensions of the input. And if we hook this up to a jit.p window, um, you, we should see a nice grid. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so what's going on here, we have, um, now remember that p window is interpreting what's coming out of this as red, green, blue values. So red is x, green is um, y and uh, z is blue, z is always zero, so none of these had any blue. But as you can see, we go from left to right, we gradually get more and more red. Uh, as we get more and more, go further further down in y, we get more and more green, and over here, this is the value uh, one one for red and green and none for blue. So this is ultimately we're going to interpret this data as geometry data, but here it's what is what it looks like when it's interpreted as uh, color data. So anyway, um, Finally, we're going to make a jit.gl.mesh, uh, give it the argument cell pump, because that's the context you want it to render into, um, at draw mode try grid, because you want it to draw as an, a grid of triangles. I think it might be try grid by default, but whatever. Um, do we need to give it any other arguments? I don't think so. We should just be able to hook this up to this. And look, there's our beautiful plane. Oh my god, it's so exciting. There's a plane floating in space, and I want to be able to rotate space. So we need jit.gl.handle, and we can connect this to our jit.gl render, and now we should be able to... Ro oh my god, look at that. It's so freaking exciting. Um, I actually want this thing to be centered at zero, zero, however, so I'm going to do um, jit.op at, uh, at op 
minus minus pass at val 0 0.5, 0 0.5. I think you just make it 0 0.5. So jit.op here, I want to subtract 0 0.5 from the x and y coordinates so that instead of going from 0 to 1, x will go from minus 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5. Same goes for y, and I want the z's to stay at 0. So that's why I've given this um, minus, minus, pass. Uh, pass meaning just leave the z values alone. So I'm going to hook this up to this and this up to this, and now the plane is right in the middle where we want it. Awesome. And I can do this to zoom in, and gray on fuchsia, not the most beautiful color combination I've ever seen. I don't know about you. Um, this is why I'm an engineer and not a uh, famous new media artist like Jeremy Bailey, but that's here nor there. Uh, anyway, so now that we've got this thing, the next thing that I think we want to do is map my face onto it, right? Like, here's a surface floating in 3D space. Why is my face not mapped onto it? Um, so that's easy enough to do. We get a jit dot gl, nope, jit dot qt dot grab. Um, we need a message box that says open. We need a message box that says close. Uh, and we need to hook these up to jitqt grab. Um, I also like to set the at unique parameter on jitqt grab to one. Um, this means that jitqt grab is only going to output a new frame whenever there actually is a new frame. Um, which is very handy in case uh, we're sampling JitQt grab a lot faster than it's actually capturing new images. And I'm going to send the bangs from the pre-render. Um, see, this is why it's very handy to have this send pre-render here. So now before we render each frame, I'm going to hit JitQt grab to see if there's some new texture to be sent in. Um, opening that up, and I'm going to throw in a jit.p window, so we can make sure this is working, .p window. We should see my face. There it is. Oh, good. Good. That's there. Awesome. Um, and now if we do jit dot jit dot uh, g g l dot texture, and I'm going to give it the argument cell pump because I want this texture to be created in that same context. Uh, at name, let's call it cell text. This is easy. Well, let's call it pump text. It's a little bit. Pumped. I, can't, I hate saying the word pump. I keep feel like, I don't know, pump and it's gross. It's like the word moist. It just doesn't feel right. So I'm going to send jitqt grab a jitgl texture, come back up here to my mesh, add an attribute at texture pump. God, it's <laughs> pump text. I hate saying that word. And now my face has been mapped to this square even though you can barely tell. And that's because our texture coordinates are all goofed up. Um, there's a way to fix that though. I'm gonna put this down here so we don't have to deal with it. Um, so the text coordinates need to, we need to tell for each point in the square uh, where it needs to sample from the incoming texture to actually draw. Uh, fortunately, that's very easy. Uh, what's coming out of here is where the plane ought to be and what's coming out of this GL expert are normalized coordinates between 0 and 1 and x and y, which are exactly what we need um, to draw our texture. So I'm just going to hook this right up here. And there's my face floating in space. There's my face floating in space. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Aren't you, aren't you glad, viewer at home, that this is... <laughs> aren't you glad you decided to watch this YouTube video now that you're being treated to this absolutely beautiful spectacle? This is probably the most, this is probably the least attractive um, frame of video that's ever been put on YouTube, but there it is. Enjoy. Um, so anyway, let's, uh, having done that, let's go ahead and make that uh, glitchy and screwed up, shall we? Um, what a good motto. Let's go ahead and make that glitchy and screwed up. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so what do I want to do? Well, we've done a good job so far of getting my face floating here in, uh, in this wonderful pink ether. Um, but now I want to distort the plane, and I'm going to do that by uh, tweaking with the Z coordinate. So remember, the Z coordinate is here's X, here's Y, and then Z is how far in and out of the plane we're going. Um, so all I'm going to do is just add some noise, boyo. So back here in um, MaxLand, we'll do jit.noise. 
I mean a one plane matrix of floats since we're only um, playing with the z uh, dimension, z coordinate. And I'm going to give this the same dimensions as our input matrix. And I'm going to cook up another pre render and hook that up to this JIT noise. So now it's going to bang out a new matrix of noise um, quite frequently, uh, once every frame. And I'm going to do JIT dot op dot op at uh, op. And then I'm going to pass the x values, pass the y values, but add the z values. Um, I'm going to hook half of this up to, uh, so I'm going to add the noise to the Z matrix and the output is, yeah, look at that. Look at that excitement. That is, <laughs> that's pretty cool actually. Um, so we should probably add a little scale in here so we can scale. So I'm going to do JIT dot um, times at val 0 0.1 and add a floating point number box here so we can control how much noise actually gets added um, like so uh, 0 0.2 say yeah and look now we can scale up the, the intensity of how much we distort my already my what what nature nature distorted my face to a certain degree and now with um with the computer we can distort it even further to its to its i think most appealing form this is i think how i would most like to be seen by the outside world um but anyways so there you go there's uh using this floating point parameter to scale uh the intensity of the noise being applied to my face now one thing we can do that's actually going to make this look way cooler is come down here to this jit gl mesh what I want to do is turn on um, lighting enable one. So adding a, a parameter or an attribute lighting enable one to turn on lighting. And you'll see this whole thing instantly goes black. Um, I don't know why this is, but the way to fix this and then come down here also turn on auto normals, uh, auto normals one. Oh, and now, ah, crud. Okay. Um, First, turn on auto normals, then come up to JGL render, and then make this. Um, I think you, I think I had it right the first time. You want to make light position minus one, minus one, minus one, zero, um, or maybe zero, zero, minus one. Nope, had it right the first time. Minus one, minus one, and that's uh, going to be what you want in terms of your normals. And also um, down here in JGL Mesh, this is going to be a lot of control. So, um, draw mode, tri grid, texture, pump text, lighting enable one, auto normals one, and at smooth, smooth shading one. That will make this look way better. Um, so, Here's something else that we could do. Um, you may notice that this is adding a new matrix frame all the time. Maybe we don't want that, so I can throw a speed limb in here and um, give an argument to say 250, hook up a floating box so we can change this. This is going to make it so that we only calculate a new plane of noise data um, once, four times a second. We could even do this every second, so it looks like and I'm going to turn down the noise intensity a little bit. So that's kind of interesting. It's a little bit goofy. Yeah, there's my face being all rippled by noise data. Um, another thing we can do, I mean, nobody said, this is Max now, we can do whatever we want, you know, just because dad says, just because dad says our input matrix and our noise matrix have to have the same dimensions doesn't mean it's right, man. Um, so all we have to do here is I'm going to make an adder UI, uh, hook this up to my JIT matrix, give it the argument dim, and do the same thing down here for my noise. It's getting a little ugly, but we can deal. Um, I throw this over here. Hmm. Oh, we had it right the first time. 
Um, but now watch this. If I make the noise matrix have dimensions 10 by 10, we get this totally different and very cool like pixel effect. So look at that, like these little, uh, <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah. Isn't that nifty? I think that's pretty nifty. Um, yeah. Huh. And of course we could make this like, I don't know, two by 30. And now it looks like this. Make that noise a little bit more intense. Oh, not that intense. Too intense. Yeah, look at that. Um, and then one final cool thing we could do um, is instead of just jumping to a new, a new noise value, we could smoothly interpolate between noise values. And that I think would look pretty got pretty handy indeed. Uh, so to do that, after this noise thing, I'm going to throw in a um, jit.matrix. Jit um, I'm going to give it the attributes at through zero at adapt one. And all this is going to do is hold on to this noise matrix every time we calculate it. Um, instead of, uh, so every time we calculate it, it's going to, a uh, new noise matrix, it's going to go into this matrix, but this matrix isn't going to spit it out right away because we set at through zero. We're just going to hold on to it. Um, and I'm going to add a jit.slide. jit.slide just interp when it gets a new matrix, it interpolates between the matrix you get, you give, you're giving it and, uh, the one it, it got last. Um, and it uses two parameters, slide up and slide down, to determine how fast it interpolates between the two. So I'm going to make slide down, uh, give it a value of point of 4, and slide up, give it a value of 4 as well. Send that matrix into this JIT slide. And now, if I hook this pre-render up to this through matrix, we got this cool effect going on. So I don't know if this is a result, as is often the case uh, in the context of Max. I don't know. Oh, that's actually pretty sweet. Um, I don't know if you should necessarily be proud of this result. But uh, I don't know, man. That's as far as as far as I'm concerned. That's pretty goddamn cool. That that in my mind is uh, an afternoon screwing around in Max, very well spent. Aren't you glad we didn't go outside and instead decided to uh, play with number boxes? Um, in any case, yeah, I hope that was uh, fun for you guys. A little tutorial on how to make some geometry and screw around with textures. Um, hope you enjoyed, and uh, yeah, if you can come out to Noisebridge tomorrow, Wednesday, February 6th at 8 p.m., going to do an introductory max class, and it's going to be pretty fun. Um, so in any case, thanks for watching, and uh, me, me and my pixels, we'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. How do I stop?